Love one another. I have called you friends. Over the years, these words have nudged themselves into being my favorites in all of Scripture. The new commandment that we hear about, not only today, but on Monday, Thursday, is love one another. Simply love one another. And its companion in my mind is that simple phrase, I have called you friends. We are not only friends of Jesus, but we are also through him friends of one another and brothers and sisters in Christ. And that, quite frankly, I think, is what made Porter Gifford's death so crushing yesterday when we heard that. For it was a friend who died. It was one who we loved. It was one who loved us. Humanity does not always practice this love and this friendship very well. We see alienation all over the place, and in particular in our politics, where rancor and division are nearly taken to art forms. And so in the can anything good come out of Nazareth department, I've decided just for fun, just for the giggle of it all, I'm going to call on the words from a couple of folks to reflect on the subject of love and friendship, ironically, from their place in the political arena. Orrin Hatch has been the Republican senior senator from the state of Utah since 1977. I had the good fortune to get to meet him on many, many occasions. And I thought about him a few weeks ago when I was helping a friend of mine in Salt Lake write a family prayer for the funeral of her mother. In Mormon funerals, the family usually gathers in a separate room just prior to the service, and the family prayer is given by a relative, usually the senior member of the family, and then the casket is closed. It's an extraordinarily intimate moment for those with this special bond to the one who is now resting in the arms of Christ. And somehow in the course of this, we started talking about Senator Hatch's mom who died 20 years ago. And there in the company of the Hatch family assembled for the funeral stood on none other than the charismatic leader of the Democratic Party, Senator Teddy Kennedy. I've told you that story before. But what I've only recently learned is that when the Kennedy matriarch, Rose, died 49 days earlier at the age of 104, and Teddy found out that Mr. Hatch had snuck into the back of St. Stephen's Catholic Church in Boston and was sitting in the back pew for the funeral mass, they got up, they rounded him up, and they brought him forward to the family pews. They loved one another. They were friends. And here are some things concerning friendship and love that Senator Hatch said when Senator Kennedy died. I have lost a close personal friend. People called us the odd couple, which was certainly true. There were few men with whom I had less in common. Ted was born to a famous patrician family of Boston. I grew up in a poor working class family in Pittsburgh. Where Ted was an affable Irishman, I was a teetotally Mormon missionary. We did not agree on much, and more often than not, I was trying to derail whatever big government scheme he had just concocted. And in those years that Republicans held the majority in the Senate, when it came to getting some of our ideas passed into law, he was not just a stone in the road, he was a boulder. I hope that America's ideological opposites in Congress, on the airways, in cyberspace, and in the political square will learn that being faithful to a political party or a philosophical view does not preclude civility or even friendships with those on the other side. When reflecting on my dear friend's life, my thoughts continued to turn to the future of this great nation. With the loss of such a liberal legislative powerhouse who spoke with conviction for his side of the aisle, but who was always willing to look at an issue and find a way to negotiate a bipartisan deal, I fear that Washington has become too bitterly partisan. 
I hope that Americans in general and Washington politicians in particular will take a lesson from Ted's life and realize that we must aggressively advocate for our positions, but realize that in the end, we have to put aside political pandering and work together and do what's best for America. How could two people who saw the world so differently and represented such opposing philosophies of government not only author considerable legislation together, but also claim to love one another and to be such friends? How could a person of one political party embrace so warmly one of another stripe? Well, let's look at another example and maybe find out. President Carter, a Democrat, considered President Ford, a Republican, to be such a friend in which, as Jesus commanded, there was much love between them. And this is what Mr. Carter said in his eulogy delivered at Grace Episcopal Church following Mr. Ford's death on December 26 in the year 2006. For myself and for our nation, I want to thank my predecessor for all that he has done to heal our land. Those were the first words I spoke as president, and I still hate to admit that they received more applause than any other words in my inaugural address. Jerry and I frequently agreed that one of the greatest blessings that we had after we left the White House during the last quarter century, century was the intense personal friendship that bound us together. We enjoyed each other's private company, and he and I commented often that when we were traveling somewhere in an automobile or airplane, we hated to reach our destination because we enjoyed the private times that we had together. It is true that Jerry and I shared a commitment to a common faith, not just in worshiping the same Savior, but in attempting in our own personal way to achieve reconciliation within our respective denominations. We took the heart, the admonition, of the Apostle Paul that Christians should not be divided over seemingly important but tangential issues. We both felt that Episcopalians, Baptists, and others should live together in harmony with the adequate and common belief that we are saved by the grace of God through our faith in Jesus Christ. One of my proudest moments was at the commemoration of the 200th birthday of the White House when two noted historians both declared that the Ford-Carter friendship was the most intensely personal between any two presidents in history. Well, as you can see, I didn't have to write much this morning for this sermon. There really is very little to be added, I think, to Jesus, or to Orrin Hatch, or to Jimmy Carter, concerning their conviction towards friendship and love. To be a friend of Jesus, to love one another in real time and space, of course, can always be a challenge, especially when derision is so prevalent in the world. But we've been called, as Christians, to trust Jesus on this one. And to help us see the way he's given us, at least for today, showing a divine sense of humor, I think, a couple of senior politicians and statesmen, a Mormon, a Roman Catholic, a Republican, a Democrat, a Baptist, and an Episcopalian. Therefore, in our own mind's eye, it should follow that if one of their guys can love one of us, so opposite. Undoubtedly, we and those in our camp can likewise do the same. Just for the joy of it, Easter urges us on to make that very thing happen simply through calling one another friend and meaning it. Amen.